is a project I've been wanting to do for a while. It's work related, but then again, I can't really do this at work because it's a time waster. You know, I have to justify my time. So I'm doing this at home because it kind of satisfied my geek curiosity and uh, something that's beneficial. This could be somewhat way out of you guys' league out there as far as cost uh, and uh, what do you call it? Uh, practicality for you guys out there maybe for, for for the ultra geek out there this is right up your alley but uh this is something work related and and so forth but hopefully i would dumb this down to to the point where it's it's something for everyone if anything it'll be a lot of uh basic concepts to talk about and one of the major ones to take care of the guys out there that are getting new to communications is uh you know what sort of test equipment do you need really to run comms if you run a group you're in your family a family group or just by yourself trying to get into this hobby or prepping or whatever uh, for communications what it is the minimum amount of equipment that you may need to uh, service or, or maintain your equipment and uh, it's not cheap as you can see from all the you know uh, radios out there the radios themselves run into the hundreds of uh, dollars Test equipment is even worse. For instance, this guy right here, this piece of a test equipment here, I would estimate is around 30 grand. This is a digital radio test set, one of the newest stuff out there. Yeah. I don't have 30 grand to be spending on this. Ain't no way in the world that I'm gonna, you know, justify buying this unless I got deep pockets or something. I think what you really need to work on Com Gear to set up and make sure that it works properly and everything is running correctly it's two pieces of equipment at a minimum to start with I'm, some other guys might think oh but i need this that and the other yeah that's fine and dandy but that's the, the advanced guys and like i said budget will dictate all that stuff i think my own personal opinions and then this is all it is is an opinion all you really need to maintain your equipment out in the field, rather be by yourself or a bigger group or something like that, it's two pieces of equipment. A watt meter and a voltmeter. Voltmeter, the vast majority of you guys already know what that's all about. This one here is, uh, uh, measures amps through, through the outside there, so you don't have to break the circuit and, and measure amperage. DC volts, AC volts multiple things to test with this not just com gear battery voltage I mean a lot of you guys will have uh, what do you call it uh, cell uh, solar cells and, and and all sorts of other equipment that you could test with this here but as far as your com gear something like this is highly recommended if you really want to get into communications or have that one person uh, of your group sort of outfitted or you know however you're gonna pay for this crap this here is a watt meter this has been around for decades this particular model it's it's the bird electronic corporations from Cleveland Ohio and they they're like the coca-cola of watt meters when I first started in communications back in 1988-89 in the Marine Corps this is what they issued us or, or have in the electronic shop in, in, in the core. Uh, whether it be the depot level or the field uh, technicians that are uh, assigned to or attached to a uh, grunt unit. This is indispensable. With this here, you will know exactly how efficient your antenna is transmitting. Uh, if you it, it, tuning is everything your antenna is the Achilles heel of your communication system and this is the equipment that makes sure that you have a properly tuned antenna to your the radio that you are using about and this kind of fits in perfectly to what I'm about to explain while doing something more high speed low drag with this particular equipment here and all the the porcupine antennas on on top there so like I said this is something for everyone here my project this weekend is to consolidate all some of these antennas into one port like this here is 150 megahertz VHF 
This guy right here is 800 megahertz. The ham similarities would be the 900 megahertz that they're allowed to use, uh, but maybe a little smaller antenna. This is like six meters, low band VHF. This is just representing a longer whip antenna for the long, long for the lower uh, frequencies. I use something else, but I just don't have it on me right now. And back there is a UHF quarter wave antenna. So that's four radios on top of here. Believe it or not, I want to add some more. I know, crazy, but it's, it's just the nature of what I do. And, and I want to go somewhat low profile, which is kind of hard to do with a porcupine vehicle like this. I mean, I drive down the road and, and I get weird looks and, and kind of like, you know, who is this guy? FBI or CIA or what? I'm going to see if I could consolidate at least three of these antennas. In the market today and stuff that I found or commandeered or whatever to help me with my project, I could only consolidate three of those radios. VHF, UHF, and 800 megahertz. There is no ham radio or amateur radio gear a version of those gears except maybe a, a, a dual band antenna setup so you could only combine two radios a VHF and a UHF antenna uh, radio rather but ham gear some a lot of your equipment you already have that in one radio in my case I have agency radios that are separated so those are three different radios three different boxes that I have to sort of combine into one antenna system I cannot put them all in, in, in any of these antennas there because if I transmit an 800 megahertz radio into a UHF antenna, it's going to be really inefficient. A lot of that power that, that's being transmitted out is going to be reflected back into the radio and possibly damage it. And, and not to mention that my reception of UHF frequencies out there will not be very good either. So I need more of a wider band antenna to accept all those frequencies that I need to monitor and transmit on. And what devices out there that are, that are available. This is being one of them, a disc cone antenna. I know it's big. This is a uh, sort of like a command post version of it where you could field expediently uh, erect this and, and monitor all those frequencies of those bands. And it's... Uh, efficient enough to where you could transmit as well so that's one transmit line going back to me or transmission line the little one here and this is what it looks like on the on the spectrum analyzer for return loss so for, for you guys watching uh, the big number to look out for is this minus 12 anything higher than minus 12 we're talking about minus 14 and above minus 21 it it's a better tuned antenna so right here at 152 is minus 12.3 and it gets lower here into the 230 megahertz which is like hospital equipment and stuff like that maybe a v there's a ham channel under that uh, somewhere around there to the 220 megahertz range and that's at minus 20 so that would receive and transmit really good there let's go to VHF Ham channel VHF minus 20 D dBMs of return loss. That would transmit efficiently and receive efficiently very well on that frequency. Let's go to 800 megahertz around there, 803, 802, minus 18 or 16 dBMs. So with that, within that span there, it would receive and transmit very well. Because this is a wideband antenna, that disc cone design is wideband. So it's designed to receive very well, or not very well, but it's kind of like the Leatherman tool of antennas. It'll do everything, but not efficiently. But it'll work, it'll get you by. So that, that would take care of my problem, but I can't install that on top of my vehicle. You think I'm getting weird looks now? If I put this on there, that's it. I'm, I'm, I'm a marked man. Besides, there's no way to, for me to kind of mount that and set externally, and that would look even worse. There is a vehicle version of a disc cone antenna, but we're talking about 1,200 bucks. 
This guy right here, I believe, is uh, 800 bucks. Price will not do. Here's the civilian version that I featured on my channel some time ago. Is the Diamond disc cone antenna. It goes from 25 megahertz to 1300 megahertz, and uh, it does very well. But like I said, this is a base station sort of configuration or command post configuration for a wideband antenna system. That is not going to be practical for my vehicle here. All right, let's take a look at another option. So typically there's dual band antennas, one for VHF and one for UHF combined into one antenna. So that would take care of this port right here that I got my VHF antenna and my UHF antenna which is in the back there. So I can combine those two into one port there. Let me see what that looks like. And that's your typical dual band antenna. VHF dual band antenna. You can tell by the little curly curl here. That is somewhat of a electronic component in itself built into it. So from this point to the top, it's tuned for a VHF. And then this coil here stops it. This point here stops the UHF at this point right here. So it's this length is UHF. So that's how they kind of engineered this to do two in, in one. And let's take a look at that in, on the scope. This little dip right here is your UHF range. And it's within specs and it's testing good. Here's yeah. your VHF as a display being tuned in that VHF range here. So that's that same antenna that you see over there. So typically on ham gear, you have radios that are two in one, a VHF, a dual band radio. So the du diplexer in there is, uh, is already built in. That's on ham gear. Some business class radios are out there for that particular range. But not often, usually they're separated. UHF with the VHF, they're, they're separated. As in this case here, this radio here, Motorola radio, is a VHF radio, and this is a UHF radio. Kind of like the same setup I have in the, in the truck here. So how am I going to combine these two to work off of one antenna? There's a company out there called Sticko. They've been around for a while, and they specialize in kind of weirdo configurations like this. They do a lot of undercover stuff. Very expensive, but it's, it's pretty good. It holds up and everything. So this box right here, it's, it's, it's a diplexer. So you got the two ports here, VHF and UHF, and then you have your common antenna. And this is what it looks like put together. VHF radio, UHF radio, antenna output into the diplexer. They both go into the diplexer and they use the one antenna. And there's the cable to the one antenna, out to my dual band antenna. So that's two radios into one antenna. That'll work. That'll take care of two ports and it'll leave me with one. But I'm going to go a little bit weirder than that. I'm going to put three antennas into one port and I, and I got the device to do that with. 